to nine. Well, as the dust settles after the Chancellor's budget speech, we're looking this morning at how some of the announcements around welfare reform could impact on people in Northern Ireland. You'll remember the Chancellor confirmed an extra £1 billion over five years for universal credit to help protect claimants moving on to the new system. Philip Hammond also told the Commons that the era of austerity is finally coming to an end, which the Labour leadership and others disagreed with. Earlier, we heard the concerns of some of those who attended a public meeting about welfare reform. It is just completely just putting the boot into the poor working class people who are struggling as it is, you know, never made this on top of it. You know, you get welfare, you, you'd be getting looked after, you'd be getting, you know, people will be looking out for you. It's just completely opposite. It's just the boot in at every turn, you know, you, you can't get away from that. Some thoughts being expressed at a public meeting last night. Let's talk now to Bob Strong from Advice NI, who's in the studio with me and on the line, Felicity Houston, who's an accountant, accountant and Conservative NI member. Bob, I'll come to you first. And um, problems with universal credit have been acknowledged and the Chancellor <coughs> is spending £1 billion extra to protect claimants moving on to the new system. That's got to be good news, hasn't it? Well, it, it, it's, it's always the same with... Uh, policy announcements once you start digging down into the detail of them connor you find uh, uh, that it's maybe not all as rosy as you think it is i mean a million a billion pounds extra is obviously welcome but it has to be put into the context of the cuts that have already taken place to the welfare system um you know it's a more generous system it works out i suppose about an average of 630 pounds a year but put that in context that's a loaf of bread a day it's one pound 75 a year so we've already had benefits frozen um, and then the, the tapers were cut in 2015 uh, by the Chancellor of the Exchequer. So we're really making up on lost ground. And Are we you, heading in the right direction, though? Um, well, that's yet to be seen. We we don't believe so. We think we think the Chancellor's missed an opportunity. And there are so many um, uh, problems, both in terms of the strategic kind of ambition for universal credit and also the operational outworking of it. And it really isn't working for people. He could have taken the opportunity to do away with things like sanctions. The big problem that we're having at the minute is obviously the weight that people have to have uh, before they can get a benefit. That's sending people into poverty. Our advisors are telling us they haven't seen it worse on the ground in a long time in terms of the stress and the problems and the difficulties. OK, let's get Felicity see. Houston to react to some of those accusations that the Chancellor isn't really addressing core problems here. Well, I, I'm not an expert on uh, universal credit or benefits. Obviously, I'm an accountant, so Bob's the man who has the detail on that. Um, I mean, I think the thing the Chancellor has been doing, and as you mentioned, I'm a member of the Conservative Party, but we mere plebs don't get involved in writing the budget. But I do have to give credit, although it might stick in my throat, to the Liberal Democrats when they were in coalition with the, with the Conservatives, because what they did was introduce an ever-increasing level of personal allowance within the tax system. And that has taken more and more people on low incomes out of taxation and we're now up next year at twelve and a half thousand pounds before you pay any tax and i have seen over the years the impact that makes on people who might have been paying tax but aren't or were paying a small amount of tax and are paying even less now and it is one of the things that has made a huge difference i think to people who um as i previously had to pay tax people who are the lowest earners in the country but you see, the thing is, Bob, I mean, a lot of people in the Tory party are worried that he's spending too much, uh, that you don't think it's enough. Uh, do you think it would only be a Labour government who would meet your requirements? I, 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 I think that what we have, if, if you look at the figures on this, um, the bottom 20% of the poorest people in the country are flatlining on this budget. There is no increase in them, which it's being given on one hand and taken away on the other. You know, we had the announcement about personal allowances, but when you drill down on that and you see the, the cost of national insurance coming out of that, um, when you look at all of the other cuts that have been happening in public services, so overall it, it, for the poorest people it's not really making that much of a difference. It is benefiting actually, those people who, who, who you know, and, and the winners in this are people who are on higher earnings, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, uh, the Felicity. national insurance doesn't affect the increase, the, the raise in the cap on the national insurance doesn't affect the lower paid. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, it is the higher paid who thought they were actually getting some benefit to this and have now found um, in Bess Gordon Brown traditions that when you drill down into what the budget actually is, you find different circumstances. So that's the case with that, certainly. There's a worry. I mean, you said you were an accountant yourself, Felicity, mm -hmm. and of course, spreadsheet Phil famously is, uh, mm. is a bit of an accountant himself and somehow he doesn't... Sort 
sort of have a, a feeling for what people are actually suffering, you know, in his well, forest I, of figures. Well, I think most of the Treasury, it would be seen like that, that are a long way from reality and normality. But, you know, I think, uh, I mean, much of the problem is these are economic forecasts, which he's using to work out what he can spend. It's more of a prophecy, really, than a science. And we will find that he's based things on the OBR figures. And in a year and a half's time, things will be very different. I mean, it, it worries me, actually, that it, it, I mean, it seems to be all sort of, you know, rabbit. he kept talking about rabbits out of hats. And it does feel like a magic act, what he was managing to come up with. I mean, I think a great many people are worried about the, the macro figures and where he's actually got them from. Bob, what do you make of his uh, quote, for instance, my budget sends a clear message to the people of Northern Ireland, your hard work is paying off. Um, hard work, uh, bring the jobs and, 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 uh, and we talk about that. I mean, we've got to remember here that the impact of all of this on universal credit and all the rest of it is, is on the working poor. Two thirds of people who receive that benefit are in work and they are struggling in work. Um, because unemployment figures are historically low across the UK. They are historically low and we know that um, from the low pay uh, unit and others that a lot of those jobs are in what we call the gig economy. Um, they're very, very transient jobs. They're not full-time jobs. They're not. They don't give people an opportunity to get a good start in life, to get a, a pension and savings and all of that. So people are running from job to job. So whilst we may have uh, more more people in work, it's not the kind of work that maybe you would be wanting people to have. Felicity uh, Philip Hammond is of course a great supporter of Theresa May, who's been clinging on to the leadership quite successfully. It has to be said for some time now. Okay. Has this all shored up her position? Would you say as a Conservative member yourself? Well, I think Theresa May's ability to hang on as Prime Minister is another one of these great magic acts that, you know, history will look back and say, well, maybe we all underestimated her, and my heavens, the woman is tenacious, if nothing else. Um, I'm sure that that budget was deliberately put together to, to, to sell a good impression of, of the Prime Minister, as well as the Chancellor, who seemed to have had a personality transplant. I mean, who would have Yeah, his jokes are still pretty rubbish, though, it has well, to they be are, said. But, I mean, he even <laughs> smiled. There was much less of the Eeyore about him. He was <laughs> close to Tiggerish. It was quite extraordinary to watch. Um, it still does dishwater the actual context or the detail of it all, but presented in a much livelier way. Okay. Yeah, well. But the context of all of this, what we have to remember is, is that, and we're, we're obviously in the middle of Halloween uh, today, is, is that we have the nightmare of Brexit coming. And so a lot of these forecasts and a lot of these, uh, you know, um, uh, spending plans may well fall to the dust. OK, on Project that note, Fear we must again. end it. Uh, Felicity, thank you very much indeed to Felicity Houston and indeed to Bob Strong. Thanks for coming in. Richard's back with business insurance policies under the microscope.